The following is a presentation of the Black Hollywood Live Network, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African American entertainment. Hollywood redefined. From Los Angeles, California, presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies, this is Black Hollywood Live, Black Sports Weekly, featuring weekly in depth interviews with some of today's most talked about athletes. Black Hollywood Live, Hollywood redefined. You're listening to Black Hollywood Live. And now, the host of Black Hollywood Live, Black Sports Weekly. Yeah. What's up, guys? Good afternoon, good morning, good evening. Welcome to another fine week of Black Sports Weekly. I'm your host, Thaddeus Massey, and joining me today is... I'm Charlotte Brogan. What's up? Sorry, I didn't know you were going to say my name. <laughs> <laughs> I'll let you take it. I'm going to let you go ahead and introduce yourself. Who, um, else, is with, who else is with us today? Oh, Sitting man, over here. Not much. Your boy, Derek Hagan. I'm back. Derek yeah. Hagan is yeah, back, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Glad to be back with y'all. NFL standout wide receiver. I missed. Sorry, I just interrupted again. No, go ahead. I missed. Um, I wasn't here for your interview, so I'm excited. Yeah, you were supposed to be sitting sitting know, right next to me like you are now, but I, I guess not. You're here now, so. I am. Right. That's all that matters. You're going to so. get some candid Derek today because we've got a lot of stuff to talk about. Ooh, so you're going to hear a lot of what, he, you know, you're yeah. going to get to know him right now. Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Make oh, up yeah. for that interview you missed. But let's talk about, you know, we usually, you know, have a few main topics that we discuss every week at the top of the show. And I think, you know, we are actually going to have one main topic that has a bunch of subtopics within it. I think it's the, the elephant in the room. Obviously, it's Donald Sterling in the comments that he confirmed that he made uh, over a phone call um, with his somewhat girlfriend slash whatever she is. Side piece, man. That's yeah. Yeah. yeah, right. You're right. Call it what it is. Side this is a side girl, yeah. right? Uh, v. Stiviano. So he made some. And just before very... we get in, we do have Lee Steinberg calling at eleven thirty to give his p- input into the situation. That's exciting. Okay, that well, mm-hmm. okay, in, well, yeah, well, that would be great. We in can ten get minutes, Lee Steinberg be, yeah. slash Jerry Maguire on the phone, yeah, and see what he thinks about mm-hmm. this 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 whole this whole debacle that's going on. But it seems as if um, Donald Sterling has got himself in quite a pickle here uh, with these. Racist comments that he's made um, regarding his players and what his perspective is as far as his players are concerned or whatever, blah blah blah. Um, you know, I, I to me it's beyond words what this guy was thinking or how he even came up with saying this right. on a phone call. Um, well, what I'm confused about is uh-huh. how that this got recorded, mm-hmm. because there's some. I don't know if this is a publicity stunt or what's going on, but something. The fact that the mistress is saying that it wasn't um, Sav- Saviano, um, Stiviano, yeah, Stiviano, mm-hmm. that it wasn't that she didn't release this recording. I'm sorry, this is a conversation between two people, mm-hmm. right? Unless there's a third party in the room that you knew was. If it's obviously going to be a friend mm-hmm. that was then recording that released it. Well, Someone in this circle has released this to the media. Well, it's it's almost like all these mysterious celebrity sex tapes that leak out and yeah. they get it's, stolen uh-huh. from somebody. Like, really? Like, who stole this or whatever? But legally, she would be held responsible because she would basically have had to get uh, consent from him yeah. based yeah. on California law to actually... Um, record. He would have had to have known. She would have had to have asked. He would have had to say, okay, to record this conversation. Obviously, that didn't happen. So she has to, you know, uh, digress as, as, say, as far as saying, look, I didn't release this and she, somebody else released it. She knows she released it. It was stolen tape. from me. Right. Who stole the tape? There's no way. And There's how no did they get the, state, the tape it. to steal? And what tape? Like, what was this recorded on? This is. What was I it mean, recorded on? That's, that's exact, very interesting. Yeah. These are a lot of particulars that. I don't think, I Anyone's think people, I think out. people thought about it, but at the same time, they kind of don't care mm-hmm. because of what was said. And it's like, look, he said it, mess. He said it, it. He confirmed it. He said it. It was misinterpreted how he said it. Those don't really reflect nah, his feelings. Blah be. blah blah. Yada yada yada. <laughs> yeah. I don't. I want to say, yo, bro. <laughs> That's what I want to say. Like, that you, you, up. That's you, it. you stuck. Yeah. You, you're stuck. I don't. You know. Um. You know, for somebody that 
considered him a friend and known him for so long, Magic Johnson, who was the actual center of the conversation, mm-hmm. how where it all stemmed from, he was even dumbfounded at the comments that were made. And this is a guy that he's known since he's moved. Right. You know, he said he the first time he ever came to LA was like the first week he came here and he went to a party, I think, at Donald Sterling's house in Malibu or something like that. Right. And that's where he met him. He's known him for years. Long time. And long time. This is a like, man he's considered a friend and this is like he never knew this is really how he thinks. Now he's a backstabber. Right. That's that's it. Right. <laughs> no, completely. And I mean, this is in the middle of the playoffs. This is the in the middle of the biggest NBA tournament. And Sterling throws this out. The Clippers last Sunday, the Clippers uh, against the Warriors, and yeah. they were obviously distracted. I mean, the Warriors killed them. Right. Um, there was the Clippers looked like they didn't even want to be in the uniforms, and that was kind of shown when they put the uniforms down. I mean, and the, the and, logo and, at the start, right? And they had the the their tops turned inside out. Yeah. Uh, while they were trying were, to make a stand, right? Warming towards up. Mm-hmm. towards uh, the pregame warmups. I I'm just I feel I feel for the players. I think there's been some uh, some some misconstrued notions about boycotting the team and boycotting Donald Sterling. I think people feel for the team. I right. think people stand with the team yeah. as opposed they don't really stand against the team. Obviously, people are fans of those guys. You got some of the most prolific players in the league mm-hmm. on the Clippers right now. The Clippers are actually representing LA much better than the Lakers. Oh, almost. come on now. You have to go there. This, is, this, is, this is still Laker land. Everybody knows it's still Laker land. It, it is. Land. It, is. Land. it is. They still have a ways to go. But they're, you know, they're, they're, rep- they're holding it down for mm-hmm. LA right, right now. And to have this kind of situation, just it's just like the a huge major distraction that's just completely like you know there's always been a history of of, of there not being any support mm-hmm. of support being absent for right. players uh on the clippers i mean since as long as i've known i'm from la and for as long derek is, is as well is the clippers have always been the butt of every joke and they're little brothers huh? that's what they are they are little brothers to the lakers right so little step brothers <laughs> that too right but they just have not been relevant for right. years and now it's like you know they put together a good roster with cp3 coming in you right know, got matt barnes deandre jordan blake griffin they got these guys that are you know established and, and trying to put this team on a map in and you see it all started off with that with the lob city yeah you know, yeah everybody starts showing up to the game the fans are getting entertained and it's like you know it's like a new laker land right a new clipper land i'm sorry right but, uh they're steadily progressing and getting better you, you know they kind of remind me of uh, the Rams back in the day when they had the greatest they, greatest show on turf mm-hmm. and all of a sudden they came out of nowhere and they had this great team in St. Louis and these guys were putting on a show every week. Right. That This is what is what reminds me of when I see the Clippers play. I mean, these guys are the, probably the most entertaining team. Mm-hmm. Team, you know, besides watching some other great players like LeBron or Carmelo or anybody else on right. their, you know, their respective teams, they are just one player that is really exciting to watch. But this team is exciting to watch play together. They really are. And I, I was at the game on Tuesday, uh, which was the first game at home at the Stable Center after all of this happened. And the atmosphere was absolutely incredible. Yeah. They just, com- I mean, the whole stadium, everyone was chanting, we all won constantly through the game. Yeah. I've never felt I've never been in a stadium with an atmosphere like that. Yeah. Right. And I've been to a lot of NFL, like a lot of games, mm-hmm. but this one just stood out and you could tell that they were on that court and they had something to prove. But I just I just think this is such an unfortunate matter despite everything that's happened talking about basketball because this situation is bigger than basketball. Of course, right? But to, for the playoffs now the first game the Warriors had um, the upper hand. Now the the Clippers have the upper hand. It's everything. They've just kind of canceled out two games. Yeah, they didn't really need to play either of those games because it was kind of obvious who was gonna win, going to win. I think. Right. Yeah. Um. And I just I just think it's a really unfortunate situation. And I, but I don't know why. Yeah, they're I, tied right now. Actually, it, it's uh, yeah. Three, it's going three. into game seven. And as far as I'm concerned. This is a distraction. It, I think anybody who's been watching, you know, would think that the Clippers is a Clippers are a better team 
than well, they the were Golden ranked, State Warriors. Well, they were ranked three, and the Warriors are six, so technically right. they I are. I know, the Warriors, they, they've, been, they've been coming on strong and but giving it I to agree. them. But I agree, I agree. You gotta watch out for those Flash have. brothers, man. <laughs> they <with> were, Curry, <laughs> last <laughs> night they were Thompson. fighting. Yeah. 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 yeah, they're playing with a lot of heart right now. And, it, mm-hmm. you know, at the end of the day, everybody wants to win. Mm-hmm. You know, this is your career. This is your legacy. You know, your dreams are on the line. So guys, at the end of the day, I, I think they're going to toss certain things out the window. And when they get between those lines and that whistle blows, they want to play. That's all that matters. You got yeah. to focus. You got to be able to mm-hmm. blank everything out. And, right. and for the Clippers and, and the things that they're doing now, even though tomorrow we know, you know, it's game seven. It's, it's, it's winter, go home. Yeah. You got to yeah. show up. You, yeah. know, you don't win. That's it. You, you're going fishing. You're going to be sitting somewhere right where I'm at. Right. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. You know where we're at right now. But, uh, it should be fun. We'll see what happens and, uh, you know, may the best team win. Right, right. Um, Magic Johnson made some some very uh, poignant statements uh, regarding this whole situation uh, as far as Sterling is concerned. He said him and his wife will never attend another Clippers game as long as Donald Sterling is the owner of the team, which is a pretty powerful statement to make. Uh, that's kind of the stand he was taking. I was surpri- surprised and shocked. I don't know. Who else out there is listening was surprised and shocked to know that the, one of the greatest Lakers ever even attended Clippers games. <laughs> and, He's a fan. Man. Which was, it's funny to me. I was like, I does he go to Clippers games anyway? There hasn't been too much showtime in LA, so he's got to go. Right, he's got to go, 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 go watch the Clippers. Right, so now he's saying he won't go. I'm sitting there thinking, really, Magic? Are you really making a sacrifice? <laughs> right. <laughs> How many Clippers games are you really going to? I didn't even know about this. It was like weird. But, you know, Magic is like converted into the complete businessman now. So, mm-hmm. you know, um, just like uh, Diddy said, because they've been getting these celebrities that have been saying that they want to buy the team mm-hmm. and they would buy the team. And Oprah. Oprah, Oprah's Floyd, one of them. Floyd Mayweather, mm-hmm. uh, P. Diddy. Yeah. Uh, even the P. And P. Diddy said, "Look, I'm a diehard Knicks fan, but hey, I'm a businessman. That's what it's right. about. Right. It's about making that dollar. Right. And they know if you're right. a businessman, you know, you know how to make that money. Right. They know in L. A. There's always money to be made somehow, yes. some way. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yes. I believe that's why Dwight Howard came out here so he can. He couldn't last. Test, test the market. <laughs> I, I, he wanted to test he wanted, it, but he tested the market. He's like, let me see what's going on away from the court." But uh, LA, LA is too fast for him. Yeah, too much. It, it is. This, this is. Uh, I don't know. LA is kind of like uh, New York and Miami had a baby. It's kind of weird out here, like socially and like the, how the vibe is like cool and laid back. But it's like you know, like a the rat race at the same too. time. Yeah, right? that so, was kind of a good summary. I don't I know. Like that's that. just kind of how I think of it now. <laughs> what, it, what it has transformed and morphed mm-hmm. into mm-hmm. over the years. That's kind of what LA slash Hollywood has become mm-hmm. um but magic has said look you know they've got to give this t- uh donald sterling has to give this team up i know there's controversy behind they're doing it they're doing an investigation on donald sterling's wife right now shelly sterling mm-hmm. she's got a big part to do with this too yeah and for her to sit here and say that she's that she's never thought that he was a racist like you've lived with this man you've been right. with this man for right. over 50 years and sit here yeah. and tell me or tell the world that you've never seen that side of him before it's right. like, no way. come on yeah I mean, you know, there there are people that are coming out and making statements and claims um, because, you know, the Sterling's uh, the real estate company has been sued mm-hmm. uh, multiple times for discrimination. Right. There's been like three or four major discrimination lawsuits uh, with his with their, their claims that he's they're not uh, renting to minorities. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's actually been employees that have stepped forward and, you know, supported these claims that comments have been made from the higher ups Mm -hmm. um, and the execs in the company that, you know, regarding Latinos and blacks and just other minorities um, that substantiates this type of bigotry. So, and this is actually by Shelly herself. They've been claims against her, um, allegedly. So, well, the claims are not alleged. The claim, the, the statements are alleged. <laughs> right. The statements are alleged. But actually, there are court documents stating they have recorded her saying certain things. Mm-hmm. Um, so, um, hmm, mm-hmm. I don't know. We've got somebody on the line. Who do we have on the line, Phil? Lee Steinberg. We have Lee Steinberg on the Ooh. line. I don't know if you guys know who Lee Steinberg <laughs> is, but if you don't, you better ask somebody because Lee Steinberg is one of the biggest sports agents in the history of all of sports and the 
I don't can't remember the name uh, the the year of the film, but starring Tom Cruise, it was Jerry Maguire. <laughs> that film was actually uh, based on Lee Steinberg mm-hmm. and inspired by his life and his profession. Uh, Leah, you on the line? I am. How you doing there, buddy? I'm great. Thank you for joining us today here at Black Sports Weekly. Uh, we were just discussing the Los Angeles Clippers, Donald Sterling debacle, shenanigans, all this stuff that's going on right now. How do you feel uh, of your first? What are your, what are your first thoughts regarding where it has de- where it started from and where it is right now? I mean, uh, Adam Silver has gone ahead and 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 dealt this lifetime ban. Apparently. Donald Sterling is is ramping up to get ready to go to to court, and there's supposed to be a vote ensuing sometime soon with the other 29 owners of the league. I believe they went ahead and made that recommendation yesterday. Uh, There was a committee of 10 that did the equivalent of what's called a charge against Sterling in the uh, NBA Constitution bylaws. So he'll have five days to respond, and then within 10 days, they'll do a hearing. He can have representation there. He can make his case. If three quarters of the owners then vote to revoke his franchise, which they have the right to do, mm-hmm. that franchise would immediately transfer away from Sterling to the league jurisdiction. So it would be Adam Silver in the front office would now, in essence, be in charge of the Laker of the Clippers. Sorry, and they have, <laughs> it's a Freudian uh, slip. It's well, okay. <laughs> that has been the whole problem for the Clippers in this town. That's so Laker dominant. This right. is their great opportunity to step into the breach and actually garner uh, uh, a better share of uh, fan support. So, what will happen is they'll then look for owners. This has become the most toxic and dramatic tsunami of reaction to a sports story that I can remember since like Lance Armstrong or Michael Vick or Mm -hmm. before him O.J. Simpson. This has any sentient being in the United States has an opinion on this. So he had, the commissioner had no choice. The, The whole brand of the NBA was threatened, all mm-hmm. their television contracts, all their credibility. Mm-hmm. And so he had to act decisively. Uh, this is not 1850. We don't have plantations. Um, we don't <laughs> accept, we have zero tolerance for uh, this kind of racism. Right. So the point is, is that, that everything has moved very quickly. Um, and as for Donald Sterling, when he agreed to buy the franchise. This is not a private business, okay? Right. You buy the franchise with a whole series of restrictions. There's a draft, you can't do this, you can't do that. And so he agreed, like every owner does, that if there was a revocation procedure that the owner affected waives his right to go to court. He waives his right to arbitration. It's right there in the Constitution. So good luck uh, getting a judge to to take some form of a, of a lawsuit or objection to this. First of all, who wants to be the judge in America <laughs> who, who <laughs> overturns? Uh, you, you know, I don't see it. Half of those people have to run for office. But, right. but second of all, um, you haven't seen unanimity on this on a point. This was a union working hand in hand mm-hmm. with uh, management. And uh, I think it's going to be an actually happy ending because you will get a more racially diverse ownership group um, that more reflects Los Angeles. Mm-hmm. They will make sure of that. And uh, um, the Clippers have a chance to get a new TV contract and all the rest of it. So with all the trauma, there'll be happiness at the end. Do you think that the Clippers have dealt with this in a good way? I know that on Sunday they were really struggling. You could tell from that by the way they played. Tuesday they fought back. How um, how do you think that they are dealing with this mentally? Because it, it takes a toll, on not, but not just on the Clippers, on the whole of NBA. So what I would tell players in this situation, and, you know, I had numerous NBA draft picks. I had 60 first-round draft picks in football represented hundreds and hundreds of athletes is look this is a big boat you've got the mayor of sacramento the union and the commissioner all together they will act this will get 
cleared up. If you want to make a statement or express your rage, that's fine. But when it comes to playing, the key is a quiet mind. And notwithstanding all of this, the Clippers started back in October mm -hmm. working for a goal. And the Sterling thing will fade, but mm -hmm. the chance to win an NBA championship is is on a totally different level. It's separated from the racial furor. Athletes are great because they can adopt what's called a quiet mind, which is to tune out crowds and family pressure and, and every other factor in the world and perform. If right. they couldn't do it, uh, they, they wouldn't be at this level. So th they need to do uh, that. Um, I mean, what happened last night is the uh, – warrior defense was so swarming mm -hmm. that they didn't seem to have a solution for it right. and uh so but the point is is that's a basketball issue so I, they've done quite well um and uh if you if they needed a mantra win this one in spite of donald Sterling. right that would that would be great that would be the icing on the cake if they could be. Could, could win the whole thing. Um, back to the technicalities of how this process works. Um, is Donald Sterling, this is for people out there that probably don't know, like how, you know, he, he's traditionally and reputedly very litigious. <laughs> so how, how, much, how much could he tie the team up in court with legal, um, you know, with this legal process of, you know, the the for sale and whatnot, how could this could this drag out for a couple of years, two or three years, or is it oh, something else? Absolutely, that... absolutely mm. not. Um, again, you have complete unanimity throughout the uh, whole society that this uh, whole introduction of, of of racism into the the sports public is just unconscionable. And yeah. remember, an owner is not just owning a private business. They would not say you're Los Angeles Clippers if they weren't trying to somehow be part of the civic fabric to to be treated as if, if they're that. He's a public figure. These owners have uh, influence. So there's clear ability under these guidelines to do to take action against someone who who was um, uh, did something that that brought um, uh, negativity and uh, a threat to the NBA. That's spelled out. There's a procedure. They're very carefully going through it. They did the first step yesterday. Mm -hmm. um, he'll get all due process in this hearing. He can make any argument you want. But when you sign. Um, an agreement that that you will go ahead as a owner, and if this were to occur, um, uh, the let me just read it to you. Um, yeah, please. This is, uh, this this is, is 14, 14J. The decisions of the association made in accordance with the foregoing procedure, the revocation procedure, shall be final, binding, and conclusive. And each member and owner waives any and all recourse to any court of law to review any such decision. Um, that's pretty clear. Right. So, yeah, yeah. Him, <laughs> right, that pretty much sums it up. For him now to to go ahead and file a suit. Look, this is America. You can file a suit against someone uh, because they block your access to air in a crowd, right? You can sue anyone for any, yeah. but but it doesn't mean anything. And here. Um, for him to slow up this process, he's probably got to get what's uh, uh, a injunction. And that brings you into a court of equity. Um, in other words, to avoid a lawsuit and actually have someone stop something, to stop a building from getting knocked down, mm -hmm. you need an injunction. <laughs> One of the key factors to injunctive release is clean hands <laughs> that – you come into it with clean hands. His right. hands are smacking with racism. Right. Dirty. Definitely. Very dirty. <laughs> you spoke about the mayor of Sacramento, which is Kevin, John uh, Kevin Johnson. And he said in an interview that um, he thought, well, that the commissioner needed to deal with this quickly 
and give a severe and extreme punishment to set an example mm -hmm. and to show that this isn't acceptable. Do you think that he did that and the punishment was <laughs> severe enough? Uh, well, there are many people arguing it was too severe. There's no one arguing <laughs> he didn't go far enough. He, he banned him for life. Right. He said specifically, you cannot come to a game. You cannot go to the complex. You cannot, uh, uh, and on and on and on. He, he made it very, very clear, done, finished, over. And then they're on a very quick path to revocation here. So I don't know what you can do other than find somebody two and a half million dollars Tell him he can't be around a team he's owned uh, for 40 years in any way, and then take it from him. Uh, now he'll get the money from it, uh, but <laughs> they, you don't have capital punishment for uh, uh, you not having good racial attitudes. Um, we, we may want not want to deal with you, you know, but uh, uh, <laughs> we're not we're not going to put him to death. So yeah. the point is that this this. I want you to focus on this. This is a man who has $2 billion. He was offered many, many times in those early days of the Clippers when he wouldn't spend any money, when he kept letting free agents go, when they <laughs> their draft looked like my daughter could have thrown uh, you know, a, 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 a dart at a board and picked better than they could. Back in those days, right. he got lots of offers. And there was a big one to sell for Anaheim. And uh, he, or to transfer to Anaheim, which had been great at that time. They could have had their own market. He's always refused all this because his whole identity, his ability to hang out with the Hollywood crowd, his ability to be on the cutting edge, his ability to host um, uh, all sorts of celebrities, it's all wrapped up in this team. Mm -hmm. When you're 80 years old, um, you you <laughs> and you have more money than you could ever spend um, getting back the probably seven eight hundred million dollars that he's going to make doesn't mean a thing to him but losing the franchise oh my god worst punishment he ever could have right speaking of sorry speaking right. of the hollywood um life that he loves on i think it was wednesday night he was at um the grill in hollywood i mean which is a big entertainment industry restaurant what kind of example do you think this is setting because for him to go to a restaurant that is so publicly watched and he knows that cameras will be at it puts kind of puts out to the audience and the fans that he does he's not really hiding and he's not really ashamed so the concept that we all know in psychology is denial, right? Something overwhelming happens, and it's so overwhelming you can't process it. That might be the last time he goes out in public, um, you know, without heavy bodyguards. Mm -hmm. And the truth of the matter is that um, with the overwhelming torrent of 24-hour news coverage on every platform or content supply that's uh, erupted since Saturday, there's, <sighs> he's the most villainized person in the sports field uh, in years. And it's not going to be real comfortable for him to ever do that again. And um, now this is Los Angeles, you know, we're not like the East Coast, we're not going to uh, generally get up in someone's face. Right. But the point is that he'll feel the scorn. As long as he and, stays north uh, of the 10. And the scorn will be there. <laughs> and and um, if you spot him again, uh, you know, give me a call because uh, I don't think that's going to happen for for a while. Well, just, right. like, just like you said, it probably is some, some level of denial. He's on this team for uh, 40 years. 40 years close to it. Mm -hmm. um, so... Yeah, he, it has to be. How'd you like to wake up? Yeah, how'd you like to wake up in the morning Saturday with your team in the playoffs, right? And within a couple hours, um, your whole life has changed. Yeah, yeah. dramatically. It has turned upside Crash. down. Mm -hmm. um, I just want to get your quick opinion on this because one of the things that stuck out to me in my mind was when he made the comments that were recorded uh, on the call that was uh, that was released. Uh, he said he had to field calls from his friends um, regarding uh, the Instagram post that his girlfriend had posted um, and, you know, defend why his girlfriend would have an African-American posted on Instagram. My curiosity was, who are these people that he feels like he has to defend himself to? 
Who are are they? Uh, are they other it, team owners? Are they other? When, because no, no, no. remember when you used to be a kid and have an imaginary playmate? Okay, <laughs> <laughs> those are the friends. Um, right. There's um, we live in a multiracial society here in California. Right. Okay, the biggest group is uh, the biggest group that's rising is uh, mixed race. Okay. Right. Um, I mean, this is not. Um, uh, you know, Bogalusa, Alabama, in uh, in the 1940s or 50s. Right. Um, it's uh, and how, how do you know under what context anyone who's shot in public is relating to the people around them? I mean, unless you're going back to days of segregation, yeah. um, you know, there's all sorts of interaction that's going to happen. That's good. The irony in all this is this: if you want to find a real life harmonious field where people from different races and backgrounds are able to work together in close quarters every day, it's sports. Yeah. And yeah. so this is not 10 talking heads on Washington Week in Review talking about race relations, right? I mean, people who, who live in a, a, you know, a, a white suburb behind a gated community giving us their opinion on what race relations are. These are actual people working together, showering together, bleeding together, watching each other's backs in close physical proximity every single day. Right. And guess what? It works. Yeah. Okay. Right. It works. So it's really ironic that this would all uh, be happening. And uh, the level of acceptance in this society, particularly in the uh, groups he runs in, um, it's, <laughs> I mean, first of all, the the sub story here is so strange that uh, it should be on Ripley's Believe It or Not. Is he the girlfriend? Is she not the girlfriend? She's the girlfriend, but he's still married and sitting across the court from the girlfriend. Yeah. Um, and uh, how did this <laughs> thing ever become public? And then afterwards, she comes out and says, "Oh, I deeply regret the problem to Donald Sterling." Well, you know, maybe the thought of that before you took a hundred thousand dollars to take a private tape to TMZ. Right. So that whole subset of issues is over here. In other words, the question of privacy: Do we want to be judged? I mean, if someone comes up with a new way to register your internal thoughts, you know, can you be fired for that? Uh, can you lose a franchise for that? That's a whole other set of issues that once this became overwhelmingly public the way it did, um, none of that really mattered. At the end of the day, um, you cannot have someone in a great position of uh, authority uh, in sports that's supposed to be role modeling who evinces those attitudes, period. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yesterday, I happened to be downtown in downtown Los Angeles on my way to Hooters to grab some wings for lunch. <laughs> and well, on, we'll, well, we'll spend and, some time and, on that. And, that and, good right. time. And, and, and on my, my way to, to, to find a parking spot, I ran into an old buddy, Clipper Darrell, on the street. That's the dude. Clip, right. So we had a brief conversation, and he actually has a campaign going on Indiegogo to rally fans to actually purchase 49% of the team, as the Green Bay Packer fans have done out there in Wisconsin. Do you think that that's a viable, that that's likely, or how how probable is that to you, like in Los Angeles, in this market, for, for the fans to actually step up and actually purchase and own the team themselves okay i'm in newport beach um <laughs> on the bay uh the ocean's about two year, uh, miles away uh -huh. there will be a line two miles long of people belling up to try to get hold of this franchise we have the entertainment industry we have extraordinary amounts of wealthy people yeah. um mm -hmm. they're not simply going to sell the franchise based on high dollar they're going to be very careful here that this will be a group of people with one lead owner that's probably a billionaire. And underneath him, they're going to layer that ownership with people from entertainment. Uh, <laughs> you're going to have prominent African-American presence. You'll have Latino presence. Mm -hmm. You'll have a group that ensures that this never happens again. And... 
Um, there are so many people who would love to to buy this. We're the second largest market in the country. 14 million people can get in the car and within an hour and a half, two hours, get to wherever they need to get in this market. We're an extraordinary big TV market. They don't have a Dodger Clipper type of, excuse me, Dodger Laker type of contract. They can get that. Mm -hmm. The Lakers are down. They're miserable. They're likely wow. to be miserable for a while. They're owned by an owner who's suspect. <laughs> and Hold on now. So, <laughs> this, oh, man. Well, you know, the show me right the plan. <laughs> show me how they're – explain to me how the Lakers with $50 million in Kobe Bryant end up getting back to being Wilt Chamberlain, Elgin Baylor, Jerry West – or Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, Magic Johnson, James Worthy, or uh, Shaq and Kobe. I mean, just right. that—that's the Lakers. Now you, you prayer the games last year. I prayer. couldn't identify the team, and I represent athletes. Yeah, yeah I didn't know anybody. That that the, mm -hmm. I think uh, uh, Mr. Steinberg is called prayer. I think all the Laker fans <laughs> are going to have to get on their hands and knees and start to pray. Just, uh, just for there to be some change over uh, in, in Lakerland. Um, this uh, Senator Majority Leader, uh, just to, just to switch switch gears just a little bit, but stay on topic. Uh, Senator Majority Leader Harry uh, Reid is trying to piggyback on this NBA Donald Sterling, Sterling situation with uh, the Redskins name change. Uh, he's been, I guess, imploring. Daniel Snyder to change the name as you know it's being considered a racial slur for so long in the in the Oneida uh, Native American uh, tribe has kind of been pushing this for some time. Uh, do you feel like they'll get any leeway because of what's going on with the with the Clippers? They'll they'll gain some momentum as far as that's concerned, or do you feel it, like that's kind of? It certainly has pushed the issue back into um, the limelight. Um, here's the the way I view. Uh, nicknames. To understand whether or not you should go ahead with a nickname, you go to the affected group that e either feels demeaned or slighted or upset, and if they're offended and it's sincere, then change the name. It's We can adjust to this. Stanford used to be called the Indians when I went to school. Mm -hmm. They're not the Indians anymore. St. John's is not the Red Men anymore. Um, no one even remembers in a couple of years That's uh, true. the old name, except, you know, old people sitting on um, rocking chairs. And the point is that there's a big hubbub at the time they make the name change. They can call the team the Skins. They can do all sorts of things. This would not be quite the same issue, I assure you. If it didn't impact Washington, <laughs> because mm. all those people that would totally agree with us on Donald Sterling, they would totally agree with us on every uh, racially sensitive issue, turn to Gaga land when it comes to their Redskins, you know, right. and uh, I sat on a panel next to uh, uh, an actor, uh, Samuel, I'm trying to remember his name, Jeffrey Wright. Ah, uh, Jeffrey Wright, very Jeff, talented Jeff, actor. So we're, we're on CNN together. Jeffrey's giving this completely impassioned uh, statement about why Richie Incognito and Brian Martin and this is horrible for football and all, and all, and all. Now we turn to the Redskins. And he says, well, I grew up as a Redskin fan. Now that's different. <laughs> <laughs> it, it, Redskins really isn't insulting. If you go back years and years, you find that that will. <laughs> so my point is, there's not a lot of consistency on this. All right. Um, it's uh, sports. Uh, my whole philosophy has been getting athletes to retrace their roots to the high school, collegiate, and professional community, and use athletes as role models. Um, so when I had the boxer Lennox Lewis cut a public service announcement that says real men don't hit women, it can do more to yeah. deal with rebellious adolescence attitude search domestic violence than 10,000 authority figures. Or when the running back war done has just moved the 131st single mother in, and her family into the first home she'll ever own. We call that homes for the holidays wow. by making the down payment and having Home Depot outfit it. 
sports is supposed to bring positive messages, Mm -hmm. not cause people pain. Well, just to get just speaking of role models, uh, I want to get your opinion on uh, Jameis Winston's struggle with being one right now. (laughs) What do you feel? How do you feel like this is going to affect his career? This whole it seems like this, you know, he this this kid is catching some bad press, and he has been. Mm-hmm. Um, Can't get out of the rut of the hype that he's getting from Florida State, and I mean something so silly as stealing crab's legs from a grocery store. I think that <clears throat> the problem is that that comes right on the heels of a sexual assault case, mm-hmm. which is controversial because there's some feeling that Florida State may have. And the atmosphere down there may have uh, uh, influenced their decision not to press charges. And then he has stuff from when he's younger. The irony in this is that most people I know know him say he's a really decent, he's a really good, good kid. young man. He is. And so, so the point is that, um, and I think that if everything was equal, he's got a real shot to be the very first pick in the draft next year everyone admired the fact he was playing two sports he seemed to be squared away mm-hmm. um so watch what happens now the his draft is not the draft is may 8th it's next uh is this coming thursday right so he's got a whole year and uh what I would do is, if I was advising him is is to understand that every single second he's in public he is under a microscope. They use the same microscope on Johnny Manziel the year before. Yeah. Right. They created big public issues out of the fact he had a drink at a party or wore a Tim Tebow thing or he overslept. Same thing. <laughs> Heisman Trophy winner yeah. as a freshman, Heisman Trophy winner as a freshman. So um, someone's got to uh, make the point to him, and I'm sure he gets it, which is, just be circumspect in your behavior. Mm-hmm. You're not being judged by the same standards as right. uh, you know the, the man in the street. Yeah. You're, but but the other side of it is you're about to have the potential. He's a handsome, well-spoken uh, young man. You're about to have the potential to be a major American superstar. Right. So yeah. there's two sides to it. There's responsibility and the rest. And I hope for him that. Uh, he is, is able to go through all this, and ultimately, it will be the 20 minutes that he spends next uh, 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 next year at the combine, looking into the eyes of an owner and a GM, and making sure that they see who he is. Johnny Manziel has been able to do that in this draft prospect, and there were lots of doubts on him. Right. Definitely. Real quick, back to um, the NBA. It's the first time in NBA history that three game sevens are in one day. What are your predictions? In terms of? In terms of these three games and the overall who might, could potentially win the entire series. You know what's so, yeah, what's so interesting? Let's go over, give me the first one. The first one is Clippers versus Warriors. That's a three-game tie. So, yeah, the Warriors are uh, 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 so pesky because of the the, the three-point uh, ability of Curry. Um, That's a great they're word. They're never really out of a game, and their uh, defense was smothering. But uh, I'm a Clipper fan. Um, I think they come through. I think Chris Paul is a winner, and I think they come through. Okay. Uh, OKC in Memphis. Um. <laughs> The most physically gifted team, young and frisky and all that, is Oklahoma City. Yeah. So um, Memphis is very tough, but I've got to pick Oklahoma City. I would have to yeah. agree with that one. Um, and then the next one would be Indiana and Atlanta. <laughs> this is the biggest surprise in some ways of the whole playoffs because – People figured that Indiana was probably one of the top three teams. Um, when you look at at how they finished the year, they were like sleepwalking. And so something happened within that team that we won't know for a little while. Something in the chemistry or some event, something happened to turn them in from running uh, roughshod over the whole NBA to becoming more sluggish. Um, but again, at the end of the day, I'm not going against Paul George. I'll take Indiana. Okay. Uh, my last question for you today would be, 
what is going on with the Sharks? Just when we think that they're going to do something in the NHL, right? They it's like they have a curse on them, right? Fall apart. <laughs> do you have any theory on what's going on over there on the ice? I think what Jose? happens <laughs> is, yeah, I think what happens is until you actually win the first one, um, and until you're able to get over that hump. Um, so much is a matter of confidence. Um, uh, I'll tell you a story from a long time ago. So um, I had a player in the Rams, um, and they were ahead 21 nothing over the 49ers. And Ronnie Lott walks up to the player at halftime and says, and he said, oh, the Ram player was saying, well, we're kicking your thing and this and that. And Ronnie looked at him and said, we have you exactly where we want you. <laughs> that confidence, that feeling that, that you, you have two mental sets in sports. Mm -hmm. Mental set A is it doesn't really matter what's happening in this moment. We will elevate our level of play when it's critical and win this game. Mindset two, it doesn't really matter what's happening <laughs> at this moment, whether we're ahead or this or that. Because something's going to screw up, right? And we're going to lose this game. So the Sharks don't have that mentality yet, which is um, uh, really critical for all this. Right. Right. Yeah. Nice Definitely agreed. Home now. I know you um, have a podcast. Where can people listen to it? My podcast is on. Uh, there's a link on our website. Um, and uh, it's on USA, USA Sports Time. And uh, uh, it's best taken right before bedtime because 15, 20 minutes will put you right out. Uh, <laughs> I'm sure you're more interesting than that. <laughs> We've had a great time just listening to you yeah, and all your expertise really have right now. Thank you. Um, do you have any other social media, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook? I do. I Facebook? have. Um, I, I have uh, I have Twitter at, at Lee Steinberg. I'm on LinkedIn. I'm on Facebook. And I have my book, The Agent, my 40-year um, uh, career making deals and changing the game, which is St. Martin's Press, which a couple weeks ago was just, um, we were informed by the New York Times, we were bestseller for March and uh, for April. Congratulations. So, Congrats. Thank you. You can, you can get it on um, barnesandnoble.com and amazon.com and at finer bookstores everywhere. Awesome. awesome. Thank you so much for taking the time to call in. My pleasure. You know we're going to bug you again to give us a call uh, <laughs> sometime later Let's on in the season. Knowledge. <laughs> can we expect to get you back, Lee? Is he, is he gone oh, already? I think, he's, I think gone. he's gone. I think we lost him <laughs> already. Well, hopefully we can. We'll see when you're that big, you're a big shot. You're like, oh, I got, I got another call. Got to go. Bye. So That was a great insight. Wow. Yeah. He um he gave us a lot of uh, mm -hmm. pertinent information, pertinent facts, pertinent pertinent facts, and um, opinions, uh, expertise on mm -hmm. what's going on with the Clippers, and amongst other things uh, that we discussed, like the Redskins. Mm -hmm. and Yeah. Uh, what's going on in, with Jameis Winston? Yeah, and um, NFL. So yeah. we touched on a lot then. Yeah, I, I would love to get uh, Mr. Steinberg back mm -hmm. later. He's I think a man that knows, and he's, he's, he's been around a lot. Yeah, yeah he's been around for a minute. I mean, mm -hmm. they made a movie based on this guy. Right. Um, you know, yeah. Tom Cruise. Right. Tom <laughs> Cruise. <laughs> Tom Cruise played this guy. <laughs> Jerry Maguire. I mean, goodness, that was one of my favorite movies that's sitting on the shelf at home. Um, yeah, but honorable mention for today, don't want to forget that Kobe Bryant, He's uh, staying relevant. He just did a commercial for Nike. Right. Um, you want to talk about that, Derek? Oh, man. It's pretty Kobe, dope. Man. It's dope. dope. It's a dope commercial. If you have not seen it, check it out, man. Kobe, you know, he's sitting there. First, he's, what, spinning the basketball on right. his finger. Next thing you know, you see the soccer ball, then poof, you see that, that soccer cleat. That I soccer cleat. Like, I was like, ooh. All right. <laughs> That's gone viral on Vine yeah. right now. I, I need to get me get me a pair of those clips. Right. You know? I might have to play some soccer. Right. That worked. <laughs> the commercial it, worked. It, it got me. <laughs> so uh, that's our honorable mention for this week, uh, sports fans. Uh, where can we find you guys until next week? Oh, man, you can catch me on Twitter at, at 
D Hagen 80. That's D H A G A N 80. And uh, I'm there. Talk to me. Charlotte. You can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Charlotte B underscore TV or at Charlotte B, Charlotte Broadband TV.com. And, Don't even know my own website. <laughs> and, and you can find me on Twitter and Instagram at Club Thaddeus, C L U B T H A D D E U S and GQJedi.com. Club Thaddeus. Yeah, Club Thaddeus. Join the club. If you don't know, ask somebody. I ain't got the invite yet to that club. You haven't got the invite yet? <laughs> I ain't got the uh, invite you, you, yet. You'll get it. As soon as, we, as soon as we break from here, you got it. It's, right. it's in your that's, inbox. just like that. That's a bet. D. Hagen in the house. Joining us today. We got to have you back too, brother. Yeah. Always. All right? You know. Okay. Yeah. That's what's up. Yeah. Until next time, sports fans. From producers Maria Menounos, Dario Kristen, Tiana Hobson, Kevin Undergaro, and the entire BHL crew, we would like to thank you for supporting Black Hollywood Live, the first online broadcast network dedicated to African-American entertainment. For questions and comments, contact us at info at blackhollywoodlive.com. Like us on Facebook, tweet us or Instagram us at BHL Online. And I'm your BHL announcer, Scipio. Instagram me at Planet Scipio. Thank you for tuning in. Hollywood, Hollywood redefined. redefined. The views expressed here are those of the host only and do not necessarily reflect the views of BHL or its owners or principals. Thanks for watching Black Hollywood Live on YouTube. For more in depth interviews and news, subscribe to our channel here and be sure to share your opinion in the comment section below here. See you soon, everyone. Bye.